Dawn is a destiny still day to day. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back with another women's college basketball breakdown. In this one, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the biggest game of late, number one, South Carolina versus number two, Stanford in Columbia. We're going to jump right in with the X's and O's. And first off, we got to talk about the X factor, and that was Destiny Henderson. After being injured for nearly a month, this was her first game back, and she did not disappoint. She finished up with 17 points, seven assists, and six seven steals, an unbelievable stat line, and she really kept South Carolina in the game early on. She was eight for 11 from two, and some of these long twos that you're seeing here, these are tough shots that Stanford was willing to give up in order to minimize points in the paint, but Destiny Henderson on the season is shooting a blistering, nearly 60% on mid-range twos, and almost 70% at home on mid-range twos. Again, her sample size is pretty small because she's only played in a handful of games, but as you're seeing here, South Carolina is a total different team with and without Destiny Henderson in terms of scoring, playmaking, and being that pesky defender that she is on the ball. This was another huge game for women's college basketball, and both coaches know the significance of these types of games being played. I'm really proud of how our team competed. Uh, I think for the fans and for the TV audience, I thought it was uh, you know a great game, very competitive game. And that it was. Stanford started off hot. It was clear that their game plan was to sag off as much as possible and pack the paint in order to make it tough for Aaliyah Boston to bury and get deep seals in the post. You just saw a clip of them having four bodies in the paint at one time. And for the most part in the first half, this plan worked. Here, Boston makes a nice move and drives it to the bucket. But again, it's not easy. She had to earn that basket. This has been a plan of many teams that have faced South Carolina, is they only shoot 16 threes a game, which is way below the Division I average. And ideally, having more bodies in the paint would put you in a better position to defensively rebound as well. South Carolina was one for nine from three in the first half, and Stanford was able to keep them under 30% field goal percentage and get out to an early lead. All right, this next clip is ideally what I would imagine Stanford wanted their defense to look like all night long in that high ball screen situation. You see Hull go over the screen with Henderson because she will stop behind it and shoot that three. So she stays tight on her shoulder, gets over the screen while Haley Jones is in a drop coverage to protect the rim. Now with the speed of Destiny Henderson and the athleticism of Victoria Saxon rolling hard to the bucket, you're seeing Stanford play scouting report defense and they're choosing to help off both the weak side, which is normal in a pick and roll coverage where you tag the roller that's headed to the bucket, but also helping off of the strong side. You see Hannah jump leaning towards the ball handler to really gap that up and make sure that that ball handler and Henderson doesn't get to the middle of the floor. It started on the defensive end, but Stanford's offense right out the gate was lethal. You see here they score in less than five seconds, pushing the ball off of a make. Lexi Hall had 14 points in the first quarter, and she really got them off to a great start. Stanford was able to move the ball from side to side without much resistance, and they spread the floor and were able to take the bigs off the dribble like you just saw there with Aaliyah Boston having to guard Lexi Hull driving to the rim from the perimeter. Um, like with Stanford, we, we, we certainly had to defend. Um, we allowed them to catch the ball where they wanted to catch the ball in the first half, move the ball, backdoor us. I mean, it was a, it was a clinic. I'll be quiet for a minute and just let you guys watch the beauty of Stanford's offense when it's running on all cylinders with just immaculate spacing. Stanford goes into the locker room of 14 at half, but let's be real, this game's in Columbia, South Carolina. It's sold out, it's a packed house. We didn't think that South Carolina was gonna go away that easily, did we? To have to come out of the locker room because we're down or we didn't play the way we needed to play, um, I think sometimes it just allows us to calibrate a little bit, just do the things that, that, that the habits that we created. Okay, it sounds like the halftime adjustment was that Dawn Staley just wanted her team to get back to playing the way that they are accustomed to and getting back to their true identity, which is getting on the glass and scoring the ball in the paint, playing through Aaliyah Boston. The Gamecocks heard the message and they responded. But before we get there, I just wanted to highlight Ashton Preckle's special stagger play that Stanford's been running since last year 
all through the NCAA tournament that guaranteed a wide open three almost every time they ran it. So this is a play that really punishes good defense. Most teams are going to chase the girl curling around the first screen because that's typically someone that can shoot the ball well. So now that person that's screening, that first screener, has to help off on that curl. When she helps off on the curl, it opens up space for the screener to now pop off that second screen. And as we know, Ashton Prechtel only needs a millimeter of space to get her shot off. Stanford goes to the set late in the second quarter, but Zaya Cook does a great job jamming up Hannah Jump on the screen, and it totally throws off the timing that Anna Wilson's able to deliver that ball to Ashton Fractal, who I actually think probably had a shot if she was ready, but her feet weren't set. South Carolina does a great job taking away the action that Stanford wants. All right, let's get back to the second half. And again, South Carolina getting back to who they are. They dominate on the offensive glass, rebounding nearly 50% of their missed shots. Here you're gonna see Boston go to work, Saxton go to work, who finished with 8-0 rebounds. So the more possessions that South Carolina can pick up, the more attempts that they're getting at the basket and the less time that they're spending on defense. Okay, so Dawn Staley decided to go with Destiny Littleton in the second half, who played the majority of the minutes in that two guard spot. Playing to the personnel of Littleton, who's known to be a great shooter, they go with the Spain pick and roll option, which is essentially a high ball screen with a second screen on the person setting the ball screen. So watch Saxton set the normal high ball screen, but look at Destiny Littleton in the middle of the paint, screening Fran Belibi, who's showing to cover the initial ball screen with Henderson coming off. This puts Lexi Hull in a big predicament because now she's either going to have to help on the ball handler or she's going to give up a three if her girl Littleton pops off of the screen. You saw in the last clip, Lexi Hull decided not to help on the ball handler and Henderson got a layup. And now this time, Lexi Hull decides to switch onto the ball handler, but now South Carolina throws a little wrinkle into the set with Aaliyah Boston coming and flare screening for Destiny Littleton to get a shot fading to that corner. The pass is delivered on time by Henderson and they knock a three. This is a huge momentum shift for the Gamecocks. All right, I love Don Staley's decision to go right back to the same set in the very next possession. This time, everyone's worried about Littleton coming off that flare screen, so Hannah Jump chases over. Aaliyah Boston pops right back for a three-point shot. She doesn't make it, but it's a look that they'll take, and again, that's just adjusting to the adjustments. A couple minutes later, they go back to it again, and now the play is multiple actions. You see, they don't get anything off of the flare action, off of the initial ball screen. The beauty of this is just because the initial set didn't work, the play just doesn't break down. Zach and immediately cross screens for Boston, which frees Saxton up to get that entry at the high post to knock down a jump shot where she's comfortable and in rhythm. I, I think that uh, the, the defensive pressure picked up. Uh, we had 13 turnovers in the second half. I think we had seven in the first half. We, di we just didn't take care of the ball well enough. That was, that, I think that was our biggest problem. All right, we saw Lexi Hull take Aaliyah Boston off the bounce in the first half. Aaliyah Boston sat in a stance and defended in the second half. She switched on ball screens onto Haley Jones, and South Carolina's overall defensive intensity was just ramped up. Nothing was easy. Look at Destiny Henderson pressuring the ball right here. They turned Stanford over a total of 20 times in the game. Really, the biggest adjustment was just try to deny the high post. Of their last game against Tennessee. They had a big halftime. Because once it goes there, it, it triggers every, uh, all the options that they have, and it's hard for us to keep defending all of those actions without giving up a, you know, a, a wide open, uncontested layup, so. All right, you heard Dawn Staley. She wanted to come out in the second half and deny, deny, deny. Stanford's a really good team though, and they were just not going to be denied. You see a beautiful little curl here to relieve the pressure by Ashton Prechtel making that pass. Now they get the ball up the floor again. Stanford's answering back quickly in transition. They also have two really, really nice box sets for Haley Jones to go forward late in the game, which they were successful on. She drew a foul on the first play and then got to the rim for a beautiful little step back, step through for a layup in crunch time. Haley Jones' skill set is unreal, and this is a nice little play because you have your shooter running weak side, total misdirection, so that everybody's heads turn worrying about Hannah Jump running out to the corner when the play is totally for Haley Jones just to get downhill and get to the rim. 
at the end of the day, South Carolina's length was too much. Stanford had some really good opportunities around the rim that they just couldn't get to fall. But I think that the real X factor was South Carolina's ability to defend the three-point line in the second half. Overall, Stanford only had four shots from three in the second half and one in the fourth quarter. You know, when it comes down to basically a last possession, it could have gone uh, either way. We needed to make some free throws. We needed to make some shots down the stretch and we needed to get a couple more stops. All right, truth be told, both teams struggled at the free throw line down the stretch. And this play right here, I remember watching live and being like, oh my God, this could have really changed the tide. You see how Anna Wilson is like a half a second away from grabbing that steal, but the ref calls a foul right before it. All right, this sends Destiny Littleton to the free throw line, where she makes one of two, but Stanford doesn't rebound at the free throw line. Jump ball, possession to South Carolina. They go to the free throw line again, make one of two. Stanford still alive. Five seconds left. One of the biggest debates in basketball is whether they foul up three or play it out. Dong Staley makes the right call here. With a team as lethal from the three-point line as Stanford, I would totally agree to go with the foul here, and they execute it perfectly. Henderson switches on to Brink, who catches the pass in the mid post and is immediately fouled by Zaya Cook right before Ashton Prechtel got the touch pass back for a wide open look. Brink knocks down the first free throw and then madness at the free throw line continues. Fran Belibi steps over the line, violation, South Carolina ball, and that pretty much does it. Thank you guys for watching. This is what Don Staley had to say post game. Talk about the, the amount of fans that come out each game, but I mean, how much of an impact does that have, especially in the third quarter? Because it just seemed like you guys kept just feeding off that and that game went one way to the other just quickly. I guess we are kind of spoiled in that this is what we get. This is what we get. This is what we've gotten for the past seven, eight years. Um, when they're locked in like they are, uh, they weren't going to let us lose. And they, they did their job and they helped us uh, provide the energy that we needed to to win the game.